Okay, let's jump over and talk about this game is really interesting. Uh, the game between the New England Patriots and the Seattle Seahawks. So, very interesting debuts for both of these teams. The Seahawks come out and are top five in pass-to-run ratio, which is something that we never thought we would see. They were in command of that game the entire time. So is this going to be a trend that continues or is that a one-week anomaly? Was week one a mirage? That's going to be one of the biggest questions that needs to be answered this week. Whereas on the Patriots side, we saw Cam Newton come out and look pretty solid. He ran the ball really well. He was decent as a passer. Could have had a much better fantasy day if, if Nikhil Harry decided to you know not throw the ball into the end zone and, and cause a fumble that led to a touchback. So I... I was very impressed by Cam Newton and obviously incredibly impressed by Russell Wilson, but the Patriots defense still looked pretty staunch. Now, yes, they were playing the Dolphins who don't have a lot of firepower on their offense, but you know, we saw last year, the Patriots defense just came out and was a stone wall uh, for fantasy points, but they didn't have to face an opponent like the Seahawks this early on. So something's got to give in this game. And uh, when we actually look at the Vegas lines here, you know, the way that they're projecting this is it's, it seems like they're kind of confused too. This is at 45 over under and the Seahawks are, are uh, slated to win by three and a half. They are in Seattle. Uh, Seahawks are, you know, implied roughly 24 to 21 would be the final score here. Now, I, like I said, the Patriots defense was really good last week, whereas the, the Seahawks didn't really do too much to stop Matt Ryan. They were just outscoring them. So it didn't really matter. And I think that might end up being a trend here at the Seahawks uh, defense, you know, takes a step back. Losing Jadavian J- Clowney, but adding uh, Adams as a safety there, you know, did seem to keep their defense at least somewhat potent, but the Falcons were still able to pass all over them. So it's going to be a very, very interesting game that's going to tell us a lot of, of storyline. So we're, we're kind of doing our best to read between the lines here. And I'm going to try to give you the best script that I can. So Cam Newton, I'm starting, uh, you know, Again, Matt Ryan was one of the better starts last week, and Cam Newton was pretty much unstoppable on the ground. So anytime you have a quarterback that's running the ball as well as Cam Newton was last week, he's always going to be in play for a top five option that week. Even if he doesn't throw very well, if he gets enough rushing yards and a rushing touchdown, he's going to have a very decent score. Uh, I'm still comfortable with starting James White. He didn't do as much last week as I was hoping for, but he looked pretty good and is still probably the second best option in terms of you know passing down plays. And then Julian Edelman, especially in PPR leagues, is a good play this week. You know, he still saw the majority of the targets on his team, and I think this team will still funnel through him on passing downs, even though this is going to be a heavy run team. Now, Michelle, I mean, I could talk myself into starting him, but he still just doesn't look good. Like, he hasn't looked good since the Patriots' Super Bowl run where they beat the Rams. Like, that was the last time we saw Sony Michelle actually look like a good football player. So, I'm probably not rushing out to throw him into my lineup. I still think Damien Harris is probably a decent stash at this point and could end up being pretty good uh, when he comes back. Nikhil Harry is someone I could th- I could see throwing into a lineup if you need like an upside play or you lost, you know, like a, if Jamison Crowder, AJ Brown, uh, Chris Godwin don't go this week and you have Harry on your bench, I could talk myself into starting them. And then the Patriots defense, it, it's just hard to play a defense against Russell Wilson because you never know when he's going to go off. Uh, but I can still see a, a, a way that they, they are a top performing defense this week. Whereas on the Seahawks side, I'm definitely starting Wilson for all the reasons I've already listed. Even against a tough defense, you know, he still has enough ways to score fantasy points for you that I don't think he's going to completely dud. Chris Carson, low touch volume last week, involved in the passing game, two touchdowns, great, but only six carries, no goal line carries. A little bit nervous about him, but overall... If you're starting anyone here, I definitely think Carson is at least, at least worth throwing out there again. Hopefully he gets another touchdown. Hopefully he gets more involved in this game as they reacclimate him coming back from that injury. I am a little nervous about Carson overall, but I think you can start him this week. And then here's where it gets interesting. So I have Metcalf and someone that I'm a little worried about. Overall, I still have him ranked decently high. My concern is we know that Bill Belichick's game plan typically is to take away your biggest option at just destroying him with like one single play. So anytime he plays a big bodied receiver, anytime he plays a big bodied tight end, someone that can just absolutely obliterate you in one play, he does his best to take that person out of the game. And if we're looking at the the style play that Lockett plays versus Metcalf, history would tell us that the kind of guy that Bill Belichick will typically try to shut down would be Metcalf. So I would not be surprised if Metcalf is smothered 
and is the guy that Bill Belichick aims to take away from this game. Now, Metcalf had a really good game last week, but one of one of his big plays was on a busted coverage. The other one was where he was playing press coverage again off the line, which I just I don't understand why uh, defenses keep doing that with Metcalf. You have to give him some, some space. They were doing that. They did that in college, and it worked. Like you got to go back to that. Well, Bill Belichick is a lot smarter than uh, whoever's running the show over there in Atlanta these days. So I am concerned for DK Metcalf's upside. I think his floor is very low in this game. And if you have a better option, I would probably talk myself out of starting Metcalf this week. Of course, we're not starting Carlos Hyde, even though he was the guy that saw the goal line carries last week might be an anomaly. I think Chris Carson will probably see more of the goal line touches this week. And then Greg Olson, I mean, three targets last week, he did get a touchdown, but he wasn't uh, used very much. So probably only throwing him in if you absolutely have to. And then I'm nervous about starting either defense in this one for the potential of a shootout, even though I, I expect this to be a little bit lower scoring. So this is going to be a very telling game. Uh, I was going back and forth with how I feel this one will end, but I actually think the Patriots can win this one in the end. I think Bill Belichick can outmaneuver the offense of the Seahawks there, and I think Cam Newton gets it done for him. I got the Patriots winning this one by one, but very close game overall and could go either way. 